Indians pitchers posted nothing but goose eggs the last two days at Progressive Field against the Rangers. Now the White Sox are in town. And the last time the Tribe saw Chicago, the Indians offense was red hot. If that combo continues, it could be a long series for the Southsiders. It all starts next on Sports Time Ohio. From Progressive Field in downtown Cleveland, it's Indians baseball tonight. The Tribe continues their homestand. They welcome in the Chicago White Sox for a four-game series. Hi again, everyone. Matt Underwood alongside Rick Manning. The Tribe's on a pretty good roll right now. They've won 10 of their last 15 overall, including seven straight right here at home at Progressive Field. And, Rick, the pitching's been very good, but now the offense is starting to find their stroke, led by an unfamiliar power source at the top of the lineup, his name is Michael Bourne. Well, usually he's the table setter. When he comes out there, he gets, uh, you know, infield hits. He has 21 on the year, but he has been very good this year when it comes to driving in runs or hitting with runners in scoring position. His first grand slam there, a big double yesterday where he drove in a pair of runs, but he has uh, been driving him in 10 RBIs in the last four games, so that's something very good. Two home runs, you don't look for that, but four walks, he's getting on base, and he does make things happen. Eight of the Indians' nine starters in the lineup tonight have 31 or more runs batted in, including Michael Bourne. We're back with a play-by-play -play action between the Tribe and the gang from the south side coming up next. Will the bats keep rolling at home? And will the pitching continue to stifle the opposition? Come on back. All the play-by-play -play is next. Well, we welcome you into Progressive Field in downtown Cleveland. A, a pleasant evening, really. Temperature-wise, it's going to be very mild. Feels more like a 
late September than it does late July. Zach McAllister on the hill for the Tribe. Just going to look real quickly at Robin Ventura's starting nine for Chicago. Alejandro Deaza leading it off. Then it's Alexi Ramirez followed by Alex Rios. Adam Dunn, Paul Canerco, and Connor Gillespie in the middle. Diane Viciedo, Gordon Beckham, and Josh Fegley round it out. Alejandro Deaza will lead it off for the White Sox. In his last 16 games, Deaza is batting a cool 400. You know, you look at his numbers, he's got very good numbers in that leadoff spot. 12 homers, 44 RBIs. He's stolen 12. He has 21 doubles. And only Shin Su Chu of the Reds has hit more home runs out of the leadoff spot in all of baseball than Deaza. Yeah. And he's always played very well against Cleveland, as you can see right there in his career. 360 average. Sliced and foul down the left side out of play. This is Zach's second start since coming off the disabled list. His last one coming in Seattle. Close pitch. Didn't get the call. One and two the count. Now the one and the one two. And a ground ball hit to first. Swisher, the long flip. McAllister is there for out number one. Take a look at the Kia Indians defense tonight. It'll be Rayburn gets the start in left field. Born in center, Stubbs in right. Avilas at third, Cabrera at short. Kipnis is at second. Swisher at first, Santana behind the plate. Zach McAllister on the year, four and six, making start number 13. 50 strikeouts in his 70 and, well, actually 71 innings now. He is one and one against the White Sox this year, two and one in his career. We had a fastball strike to Alexei Ramirez. Down low with it. Ramirez has had a tough year defensively, but offensively he has swung the bat very well. Down the line and foul. Not by much, though. He nearly gave the White Sox a 1-0 lead. That was uh, looked like a hanging breaking ball. He left it up. Ramirez jumped all over it. Oh, boy, inside. You better get that thing down. It's early, but that's a, that's a warning right there. Catches a break. Round ball up the middle, and there is, there's Dribble Cabrera to throw him out two down. Take a look at our keys to the game brought to you by Akron Children's Hospital. Get the jump on the Sox early. And continue to play solid defense. Mike Avila said after yesterday's game, the thing that he was happy about, not just the fact that they were able to complete the sweep, but he said we were able to play a clean game. Well, you know, no errors in their last two games, seven in their previous three. So that's something they have to do as a ball club, especially the way the pitching has been going. You play clean defense, give them 27 outs, you get good starting pitching. That means few runs. Up high. Two and one the count on Rios. Weak ground ball to short. Cabrera waits back on it, unloads. The White Sox go one, two, three. The Indians are coming to bat.
Bottom of the first inning here at Progressive Field. Indians will be facing left-hander John Danks. And the 28-year-old delivers a first pitch strike to Michael Bourne. Danks' last win came on July the 2nd. Since then, in his four starts, since he's gone 0-3 with an ERA of 559. Now, granted, those three losses have all been against very good caliber teams, Tampa Bay, Atlanta, Detroit. Yeah. Ball hung the loss on him. He had a no decision against Philadelphia. Yeah, and he pitched seven innings in uh, three of those starts that he took the loss. Bourne drives one pretty well to left field. Back is Viciedo, and he'll make the catch. One away. Following Michael Bourne tonight is Nick Swisher, then Jason Kipnis. As Dribble Cabrera, Ryan Rayburn, Carlos Santana occupy the middle third. Then it's Mark Reynolds getting the start at the DH spot. Mike Avilas and Drew Stubbs. The Indian starting lineup presented by Progressive, making it easy to bundle your home and car insurance. John Danks is 2-8 and eight this year, making only his 13th start, coming off of surgery, shoulder surgery. He's 0-5 on the road. And he has lost his last three starts. He is 4-8 and eight in his career against the Indians. He's not overpowering, but he mixes it up. There's the curveball. He's got to change up. He likes to throw to the right-handers away. Moves that fastball in and out. Up high with the fastball. When he gets to two strikes with a right-handed hitter, you know you're going to see that change up at some point. You would think so. That's his money pitch to him. He's given up those 17 home runs this year in just 77 innings. So maybe he's leaving a couple of those up. There it was. Grounded right to the third baseman, Gillespie. Two down. The White Sox defense behind Denks looks like this. D.C. 8 on left, Deasa in center, Rios in right. Gillespie at third, Ramirez at short, Beckham at second, Dunn at first, Figley behind the plate. James Hoy calling the balls and strikes. He's a local guy. Bob Davidson at first, D.J. Rayburn at second, the crew chief, John Hirschbeck down at third. Jason Kipnis takes a first pitch strike. Out of play. It wouldn't be a shock to see the Indians come back and score even with two outs and nobody on base here in this first inning. The Indians have scored first, not necessarily in the first inning, but they've scored first. In 15 straight games, equaling the longest streak in franchise history. They also did it back in 1906. In fact, it's the longest single season streak in the major leagues since Milwaukee did it in 21 straight games back in 1990, and they were back in the American League at that time. Yeah. In the dirt, two and two. And as we know, the Indians have done very well when they've been able to play from in front, whether it's a run in the first inning or it's a big second or third inning that gets them the early lead. Kipnis strikes out, and the Indians go 1-2-3. No score after one.
you by McDonald's, now introducing three exciting new quarter pounders, and by Kia. Beautiful evening here in downtown Cleveland, as Adam Dunn leads off for the White Sox, batting 212 on the year. He has belted 25 home runs and driven in 62. On the check, he went too far, says John Hirschbeck, down at third base, and the count one and one. Ball outside, two and one. And that'll leave in the count of two balls and two strikes. Chris Davis still leads the AL with 37 home runs. Boy, he hasn't hit one in the second half yet, has he? I don't think so. The home run derby has put a hex on him. Paul Konerko waits on deck. The 2-2. Down low and a full count. Zach McAllister grew up a fan of the Chicago Cubs in Chillicothe, Illinois. About three-hour drive outside of the Windy City. Adam Dunn out looking, one away here in the second. Here's Paul Konerko as we take a look at our Firestone Complete Auto Care Extra Mile Index. He has homered 47 times in his career against the Indians, which seems like a lot, and it is. But look at the names ahead of him. Some pretty. That's a Hall of Fame list, isn't it? It certainly is. There's some great hitters there. Smashed a third and off the glove of Avilas for an error. Yeah, he played it off to his side, and he just uh, he just didn't catch it. One of those one of those plays. So the defense here. Gives up one early. Why is it always with McAllister pitching, it seems like? There's a ball. He Maybe he thought it was going to bounce up a little higher. Goes off the end of his glove for an error. That's when they had their bad game in Seattle was when McAllister was on the mound. Connor Gillespie stands in now. This guy's had a good year against the Tribe. Boy, he sure has. The name you'll say, who's Connor Gillespie? But first year with the Sox. Was Came with from San the, Francisco, yes, right? Yes, he did. He was with the Giants. Not a major deal by, by any means. He's played third base, and he's really swung the bat well against the Indians. Not a, a guy you would look and say a typical third baseman. He's not a power hitter by any means. But a good line drive hitter. He almost seems like this might be a, a bit of a stretch, but he seems like the, the Perfect counterpart to Jeff Keppinger, who's a right-handed hitting third baseman. Not a big power guy, but a line drive type hitter. Yeah, Keppinger is a guy like he's like a role player. You know what I mean? He can play second base, can play third. Right-handed hitter. Um, he can help a ball club that has. I look at him more as like a a, a utility guy. Ooh, awfully good looking pitch. Did not get the call. Let's check this pitch out on our Nissan pitch tracker. It's away. Does it get the corner? It's running away. Zach Ruddy. And the 2-2 is hit in the air to center. Michael Bourne has a good beat on it. Two down. Back to first goes Canerco. 
Our stat of the game brought to you by your Northern Ohio Buick dealers. The Indian starters have just been on a tremendous roll. An ERA of 185 in their last 17 games, holding the opposition to a 183 batting average. And, of course, they've posted four That's of their league-leading shutouts. Coming up back-to-back shutouts. That's why you want to play good defense, because the pitching has been so good. Line drive, right field. Right there is Stubbs, and the inning is over. Middle of the second, no score in Cleveland. Back here at Progressive Field, no score, bottom of the second inning. The Indians will send us Dribble Cabrera, Ryan Rayburn, and Carlos Santana to the plate. John Danks deals, and Cabrera fouls it out of play. Matt Underwood, Rick Manning with you tonight as always, and we're joined now by Justin Masterson down in the Indians dugout, taking this one in third base side. And, uh, Justin, obviously uh, you've been pitching very well, but the entire staff, uh, collectively is on a terrific roll right now. We just had the numbers up on the screen before you joined us. Oh, there's an error. Maybe on Adam Dunn. It looked like it was in his glove, and he just didn't come up with it. We'll see how it scored, but Cabrera's aboard to start the bottom of the second for the Trot. Getting back to that point, though, Justin, uh, the starters have collectively been on a good roll. What is it about you guys now as a group? Are you feeding off of each other? Yeah, you know, I definitely think there's something to that. You know, I think in the uh, the overall sense, you know, we had a little bit of a breather, you know, through the all-star break and just be able to come back and, I don't know, feel the extra energy. Because all year we've been pitching pretty good. Uh, we've just been able to do a better job of throwing strikes here in the second half. Well, it's sort of fun when you have that friendly competition going one through five when guys get out there and they pitch a good game. Everybody else wants to go out and do the same thing, don't they? Oh, for sure. I mean, that's that's definitely one of the things you always want to do. And I think... We, you know, we have such a, a great camaraderie here, too, that, you know, one guy goes out there, does his thing. The next guy, you know, friendly, wants to just do that much better. And I think you've seen that, especially since the, uh, since the All-Star break. Ryan Rayburn. Takes is it, is it, is it raining up, up there for you guys? I feel like it might be raining down here. <laughs> raining where's seeds? The, where's Avilas? Is he around? He's supposed to be playing today. That's why yeah, we can playing. do I, this. I, I think he's good. I think it's raining some seeds, maybe a little water. A few pitchers down there in the corner? Oh, uh, who knows? Oh, there it is. <laughs> That's a rookie doing that to you. You better go get him. Hey, you know, I've done good. I've done worse to them. So <laughs> Three and all the count here to Ryan Rayburn. 14 shutouts as a staff leads the major leagues. If I'd have told you back in March when we left spring training that this staff would be leading all the baseball in shutouts going into the month of August, would you have bought into that you know I, I, don't, I don't know if i would have bought into to that necessarily in the sense but as far as us having a solid pitching staff um it was one of those if we 
would do exactly what we'd hope we could do, I think you know we were pretty excited about what might take place. And and again, kind of going back to what we were talking about, if if you put together what we've done since the All Star break, I mean, I don't, this isn't necessarily a fluke of what the guys can do. This is this is what they can do, and and this is what excites me as we continue to go on. You know, you guys seem to pitch so well in this ballpark. Is there something special about this park? Because it, it's it's fun to watch you guys here. Off the glove of Gillespie, and the Indians has Dribble Cabrera is going all the way to third, and now down to second goes Rayburn. Nice. Aggressive base running, and the Indians are in business here in inning number two. Gillespie went to the backhand side. Justin, do you have a good look at that one? Yeah, he just went to the backhand, hopped up a little bit, went off the heel of his glove. Tough play going to his left side. Yeah, he's going to backhand. That's going to be a double, and rightfully so. Not an easy play. That would have had to be a, a, an Olay play where it goes in the glove. Cabrera does a nice job of picking up the baseball and getting all the way to third base. And then in turn, Ryan just continued to go to second base. So he got second and third, nobody out, and a chance to take the lead right now. And those uh, you see right there, those are some of the little things that are going to help us as we continue to win. You know, the guys picking up the bases right there. You know, these guys, this has been a really good base running team most of the year. Going first to third, second to home, and, and also stealing bases as well. Justin, you said the other day after the ball game that, you know, when you're matched up against a guy like you, Darvish, for example, he said, I, you said, I can't worry about what he's doing. I can't worry about the other side. I just have to focus on, you know, what I'm doing. But as that game got late, I made the comment on the air. I said, you, you look like a thoroughbred who, who could uh, could smell the finish line. As the game gets late and you realize it's a one nothing game, do you kind of reach down deep and know, hey, I've got to finish this thing out here? Uh, I, I don't know if it's necessarily the 1-0 ball game. I, I think late in the game when you, when you got the lead, I, I think there's something along those lines where it's like, hey, I want to – I want to finish this. You know, I don't know how much I got left, uh, but I want to make sure I go. And kind of my mentality is: is we, you get to the seventh, eighth, and ninth. If you if you make it all the way to complete it, you know, to to close out. You know, no longer are you the starter, but you're trying to close out each inning. And um, you know, that's been that's been a, a mentality that's been working pretty good so far this year. Yeah, because you only had four strikeouts going into that sixth inning, and then you struck out four in a row. It almost seemed like you just reached down, and found another gear. Well, and it's one of those two where when it's a 1-0 ball game, you know, their offense is trying to work hard to, to sneak out one run. And you know, whether or not they're going to press a little bit or I'm going to press a little bit kind of determines what's going to happen. And just, you know, happened that you know, I was able to stay relaxed and they were probably pressing a little more than they probably like to. Well, Bob Feller always told me, he says, you'll see the difference. Uh, you show me that guy that can close out a game from the seventh inning on in a one-run game, and that's a winner. <laughs> and, and, and he's right. I mean, when you go in there, that, that's a different breed when you can go into that seventh and get your outs when needed. And yeah. obviously, Justin, we know a lot, a lot of that's out of your, the starters' hands. You know, the manager, the pitching coach, the organization, they've got their charts. They know how many pitches. You know, if, you, if it was up to you, you'd probably want to finish every game you pitch. Yeah, more or less. Uh, but I think, you know, the more and more as, as we get going throughout this season and as Tito sees us as we go out there, he kind of understands what we look like. You know, so we could be at, you know, 86, 87 pitches, and he's like, you know what, I, I might need to bring somebody in here. You know, we might be at 110. He's like, you know, I feel like this guy's still got something going. Line drive to Vicieto and left, tagging third, coming home is Cabrera. The throw is not in time, and not only does Cabrera score, but a very alert and heads-up Ryan Rayburn saw that throw well over the cutoff man, so he tagged at second, and now he's at third, and there's only one out in the inning. With the Indians up one to nothing. Well, that's the mistake made by Vicieto in left field. I mean, he tries to throw the guy out at home plate. Uh, the probability is not. But, you know, you got to get the ball done at least hit your cutoff, man, because that gives that guy an opportunity to get to third base. Now there's only one out. That's not a good play by the left fielder. It's a good job by Santana to get the RBI home. The Indians will take a one nothing lead. And now they have a man at third base, which brings the infield in. And the batter is Mark Reynolds. In that DH spot here tonight, with the infield drawn in, as Rick mentioned. And Danks delivers low ball one. So the Indians now have set the longest streak in franchise history by scoring first for the 16th consecutive game. Nice. Justin, what does that do for you as a starter? Does it... Does it register in your mind when you've got the early lead, whether it's one run or whether it's three or four runs? Does it matter to you? I think unconsciously it does. 
uh, whether you think about it or not, it kind of gives you that little extra comfort to to be a little more aggressive that just in case, you know what, if I happen to leave one over and a guy hits one out or hits something somewhere that, you know, it's still just a tie ball game instead of us, you know, being behind as the game goes on. I, I don't know if you really think about it, but unconsciously I, I imagine there's something in there. You are an absolute pro, by the way. 2-1 pitch. People don't realize how hard that is to maintain your concentration when you've got people firing seeds at you, throwing water on you, and you got laser focus. That's why you can pitch in this front is of what 50, we do for a living. people. Yeah, huh? That's what we're trying to do out there on the mound. That's right. <laughs> but it's yeah. got to be a lot more fun, these one-run ball games and winning ball games and all that. got to be a lot more fun for you guys to call, too. I imagine it keeps you more locked in. Well, every game. And, and that's the, the, the one thing that we've always – known about baseball but what makes a season fun is when you pitch well you're in every game you've got a chance to win every single game if it, if you've got to score six seven runs a game you know that's that's not realistic that's not going to happen but you know the way you guys have pitched over the last two three weeks it's been a lot of fun to watch well that's and that's exactly what you want to see you know giving guys a chance your offense has has been pretty good for us all year and our defense especially and you know, if we can just make decent pitches, not be afraid of contact, you know, let guys put some balls in play, you know, keep it close. You know, we don't have to keep it to, to one run every time, but if we keep it within three, we got a good shot. Avilas broke his bat on that liner to short, and now we've got two down in the inning. Well, now let's see if they can come up with what has been the team's calling card all season long. The two-out RBI hit. It was big yesterday, and it's been big all season long. Let me ask you from the flip side of that. When you're on the mound... You know, we always say, boy, those two out hits, they're backbreakers uh, for the other guys when you get them. What does that do to you as a pitcher? You got two outs, you're close to getting out of the inning, and all of a sudden you give up that two-out RBI hit. Is it as deflating as it would appear? Uh, uh, sometimes. I, I think later in the ball game, it's a lot more deflating than early in the ball game. You know, uh, you know, when you're in a big situation, maybe the sixth or seventh, then, you know, it's maybe a one-run ball game, and... You know, you're out there trying to make a pitch, and all of a sudden, you know, more or less, it's usually you hang a ball, and you know they hit it, a couple runs score. That's that's probably more deflating than than necessarily early in a ball game. Stubbs drives one in the air to center field. Deaza is under it, and he'll make the catch. Thanks for the time. Thanks Go for the great concentration. <laughs> you're welcome. Go take okay, a shower. <laughs> I need one. <laughs> Justin Masterson with us. The Indians strike first and lead it one to nothing. Just take the Gatorade bucket and dump the entire thing on his head so he does it himself. That's beautiful. You know, most guys, you're right, what a cave. They wouldn't have been able to continue talking. He didn't lose a beat, did he? 
It shows you the kind of concentration those guys have to have. On the on the foul check by Gordon Beckham, he almost picked off the on deck hitter. Beckham's having a good year. He's batting 307, and Robin Ventura has uh, been happy with the way Beckham has basically taken the adjustments that he made at the end of last season, took him into the offseason, worked with him, brought him into spring training, and has just carried it over. Well, I, I noticed more of a crouch than we talked about this in Chicago when we were there that he hits out of now. He used to be more straight up. And maybe that uh, helps his legs. It helps him drive the ball a little bit more. But he's having a nice year. A little bit high. Two and two. Robin Ventura says of Beckham, quote, I think he's changed a lot of what was wrong last year. At the end of last year, he changed. He brought it to spring training. He's had a pretty good run. You get a better idea of what he's going to be looking like in the future and what he can do. That's all positive stuff. Of course, his problem this year has been flukish injury-type deals. He's been bothered by a bad wrist that forced him to miss a few games here recently. Up high with a breaking ball, and he walked him. Leadoff man aboard for Chicago. Let's go downstairs to Katie Witham, who's got more on Zach McAllister. Well, Matt, I spoke with Indians pitching coach Mickey Calloway today, and he told me the key for Zach going against the Chicago White Sox lineup that he's seen now three times this season is to establish the inside of the plate to both righties and lefties, but also it's to command that curveball. He usually throws it about 17% of the time. His first start back from being on the DL, he only was able to throw it 11%, and that's something that he really worked hard on in his side session well he's he's the, right now for me he's not throwing anything off speed for strikes he's trying but he can't control the curveball the changeup has been uh, erratic as well he's going to have to start throwing some off speed pitches as he gets ready to go through this lineup a second time high pop foul out of play In the air to right field. Drifting back is Drew Stubbs. He'll make the catch on the front part of the warning track. And back to first goes Beckham one away. Let's have a look right now at tonight's trivia question. Brought to you by AT&T. And the only American League first baseman to win gold gloves in the 60s and the 1970s. Alejandro de Aza grounded out to first his first time up. And he'll do it again. Swisher goes to second. There's one. Back to first. They turn the double play. Swisher to Cabrera right back to him. It's an inning ending twin killer, and we'll go to the bottom of the third. Tribe on top, one to nothing.
enjoy a cold one to stay tuned for Miller Time. Brought to you by Miller Light a little bit later on in the game. Michael Bourne to lead off the home half of the third for the Tribe. Went to the front of the box to show bunt. Pulled it back. Gillespie in on the grass at third. One ball, one strike. The 1-1 one, one is up high. Not to compare Michael Bourne to Kenny Lofton, but you think of leadoff hitters who primarily make their living with their speed. But these guys are big league hitters, and they can hit home runs, and they can get into a you know, a groove where you hit a few, well, kind of bunch yes, together. But, yes, but they that's can. not what they're trying to do. It's not their do. mindset. Yeah. Their mindset is the igniter. You want to get on base. You want to make things happen. You're in the leadoff spot. You would rather have a higher on base percentage. If home runs come, great. I mean, you're certainly not going to turn them away, but sometimes you get a lot of leadoff hitters that they want to try and hit home runs sometimes, and it hurts them. Fly ball to center, and Bourne is retired for out number one here in the third. All right, injury report time. Brought to you by Elk and Elk, serious lawyers for serious injuries. Call 1-800-ELK-OHIO. And this is that time of year where the injuries start to pile up on everybody. Albert Pujols. 15-day DL, but what I read today, it sounds like they could be missing Albert Pujols for a lot longer than just two weeks. Travis Hafner, not surprisingly, is on the DL with the shoulder problem. Drew Pomerantz, who was a dealt in exchange for Ubaldo Jimenez, he's got a problem with the shoulder. And, you know, we're coming up on the anniversary of that trade. The 1-0 pitch. Upstairs. If you hadn't heard, the Angels made a trade earlier today dealing one of their left-handed relievers. Swisher fly ball. Deep center. Back is Diazza. Onto the track, and he makes the catch two away. Swing for the fences with the new Home Run Derby mobile game from MLB.com. It is available on iPhone and iPad. And you can download it free today. Now, Scott Downs was traded by uh, Good the left-hander. Angels yeah. to the Atlanta Braves. And, it was for uh, a minor league pitcher, I believe. Right, and we mentioned uh, at the top of our broadcast, or was it during the pregame show, we talked about the White Sox dealing Jesse Crane to Tampa. Well, and it all depends because he had some injury problems. He went through a streak there where he was outstanding. Remember, he came back, and when we were in Chicago, we got him for a few runs. Right. And he went on the DL after we left Yes, in that did. series, in that four-game series. So he comes back. Now, from what I heard, you know, how he pitches down there dictates on the player that they will receive. Over near the line, Vicieto can't get to it. And so the White if he Sox- goes down there and pitches lights out, then the White Sox are, go- are going to get a good They'll player. Get a better player, yeah. yeah. They already traded Matt Thornton, so they've traded two members of their bullpen away. Yeah. You know, and, and right now they, they probably will be sellers. They were on the border last year, and for the last couple of years they never truly did bust it up and, you know, start from scratch and say we're going to have to rebuild. And they didn't last year, and they hung in there all year long. But this is the year. It seems like they've gotten old in a hurry. You know, they traded A.J. or they let A.J. Perzinski go right. in the offseason. Their decision. He was a free agent. Right. They didn't feel it. They wanted to give him the money, but that was a big piece of the, their puzzle. 2-2 Two-two delivery. Down low. Well, they count. re-signed uh, Peavy for two years, so that's what makes him so attractive. You know, he's got another year after this mm-hmm. year. He's not a free agent to follow, so that uh, they'll look for a little more for him. If you're the on the on the receiving end of that, you're not just strictly renting a player for a couple of months, right? You've like got Matt him Garza, for, right? That's that's true. And you saw the haul that the Cubs got in return for Garza. Well, the White Sox want more than that for Peavy. Whether or well, not they get it, you know, you have to think that maybe Texas talked to him and feel that they might be able to sign Garza. Who knows? If they sign him, it's different. If they don't sign him, they give up all that uh, all the players and. 
it could be too bad for them. For his part, Peavy's made it known he, you know, he would like to pitch uh, or have a chance to pitch in the playoffs. As Jason Kipnis has rung up on a called third strike. Indians go one, two, three for the second time tonight. They lead it one to nothing. As we roll to the fourth inning, and for Chicago, Alexi Ramirez, Alex Rios, and Adam Dunn do up. Ramirez, a line drive base hit, center field. Born over to cut it off, and he'll hold Ramirez to a leadoff single. With more on what the White Sox may or may not do with regards to Jake Peavy, their starting pitcher, who's a hot commodity on the trade market right now. Here's Katie with him. Well, Matt, I was able to speak with Robin Ventura earlier today. He told me that this is by far the toughest part of the season. He said he walked by Jake Peavy's locker earlier. He doesn't have much in it. That was really hard to see. He said that he plans to pitch him tomorrow because he doesn't know to do anything different, but they expect to kind of know a little bit more of what's going on with him early tomorrow. But Robin Ventura said Wednesday night can't come soon enough because that's when it'll at least be all over. Over and they can just focus on baseball. Yeah, it, it, it's it's easier said than done to just focus on the game and don't worry about anything else. But when you hear the rumors and when you've got family members and friends calling you and texting you, yeah. hey, I heard this. What, That's what's going all on, on television. It's on every sports uh, you know talk radio. And Chicago's a big market. Runner goes one one pitch, throw down. No, they call him safe. Boy, that was an awfully good throw by Santana. Kipnis was there to apply the tag, but D.J. Rayburn, who's subbing for Jim Reynolds, called him safe. Well, he gets in there, and they've done a nice job. That's Ramirez's 22nd stolen base. He's tied with Rios. And it's hard to tell from that angle if he gets a hand in. It's awfully close. Looks like he might have gotten it in. Let's see by the time the tag is made. I think um, he was out. Well, uh, I know. It's a tough angle. I mean, it sure looked like he had the tag on the jersey before he got to the base. Two two count for Alex Rios. Out of play. Out 
Back out of play once again. Here's another look. Umpire's going to get in your way. Where is the tag applied and when? Look at the hand gets on the tag. It's about the same time. It's hard to hard to tell. Yeah, that. I mean, that's a better shot, and it's tough to tell. But being behind when you look, you're assuming his hand's going to be at the bag, and he can probably see the tag. Rios out looking. Second strikeout for Zach McAllister. One down here in the fourth. And both have been on called fastballs. They want it in, and it goes away. It actually comes back down. It's at the knees, and it's actually middle of the plate. And Rios could not pull the trigger on it, so he get the first out and his second strikeout tonight. Adam Dunn was the first strikeout victim. And he takes strike one. Dunn, who is on pace to belt 40 home runs this year. He's currently tied 43rd place all time on the home run list with Cal Ripken Jr. 431 career dingers. He's also a guy who, in addition to the strikeouts that pile up, he draws a lot of walks. He's 53rd all-time walk list, one behind Jimmy Wynn. Yeah, he'll take his walks. He sees a lot of pitches every at-bat. He'll strike out a lot, and he'll hit you home runs. Fouled back out of play. He hasn't had a whole lot of success against Zach McAllister, though. One for 12 in his career. That hit was a home run. Nice pitch. Elevated it. Will it stay in play, though? Watch it. Avilas near the tarp. He's got it. Two down. Well, the Tribe will host the Angels. That's August 10th, and the first 10,000 fans will receive a Rocky Calavita Replica Hall of Fame plaque. It's also the second night of a rockin' blast, and it's all courtesy of Progressive Insurance. So log on to Indians.com for your tickets. Rocky Calavito turning 80 this year, so he will be in that weekend, and I'm sure we'll get a chance to see him, and what a nice man he is. Looking forward to it and still loved in this town. Always will be, always has been. Fiftieth pitch of the night, right here for Zach McAllister. In there for a strike. Well, it was a, it was a pleasure meeting Sonny Siebert yesterday, and getting the chance to catch up with Joe Askew as well. Yeah, some of the boys of that of the sixties. You go back, and a lot of the well, I know most kids don't know who they are, and you know they're a part of Indians history. But it's always nice to reflect back on the days in the old ballpark. And I mean, these guys—it's when baseball was a job. Most guys were making probably seven thousand dollars a year. Most of those guys had and real they, jobs yeah, in the off season. They did. They, they truly did. And you know, they loved the game for the game. And that's when you had roommates and. You pulled pranks, and it was a lot of fun. That's when the, the good generation that Katie was talking about, Nick's nicknames. That's when nicknames came out back mm-hmm. in those days. The older generation Indians fans love, love to hear it from those guys. Chopped into the ground. And there are players of that generation. And maybe it's because, Rick, they didn't change teams very often. True. But just their names alone conjure up images. Bob Gibson didn't need a nickname because you just think of the most intimidating pitcher of his era. Don Drysdale didn't need 
a nickname because you knew about the streak well, that he had back then. I think you hit the point, the nail right on the head, that they didn't change teams back then unless they were traded. Their free yeah. agency wasn't around. They grew up. They, they were a part of your organization. You got to pencil them into the lineup for as long as they stayed in the big leagues. Line drive to first caught by Swisher to end the inning. That ball was a bullet off the bat of Paul Konerko, and Nick Swisher robbed him of a hit and probably an RBI as well. one nothing. Tribe on top as we go to the bottom of the fourth inning. These guys are trying to pitch like it's a spring training game. They're out there with about a minute and a half to go, ready to go, and the umpires have to hold it up. As Dribble Cabrera taking a strike. It was Cabrera who reached on the error at the start of the second inning and came around to score the only run of this game. That was an unearned run. And it was kind of a, a, a strange play. I mean, Gillespie had what looked like a routine play, but his throw was a little bit low. And Dunn probably should have been able to stretch a little bit more and get to it, but he didn't. It just was He was those... going in the line of the runner, though, uh, you know, for a first baseman. That could have yeah. been the pro- part of the issue, and that's why you give it to the guy that made the, yeah. the tough throw. And that was their 49th unearned run given up, which is second most in the league. One down as Cabrera flies out the center. Right now on FoxSportsOhio.com, Booby Gibson is in hot water with the New Orleans police. Updates from Brown's training camp and see all the new NCAA football rule changes. It's all on FoxSportsOhio.com. Ryan Rayburn. Hit a bullet to third, kicked off the heel of the glove of Connor Gillespie, went for a double, and that set up the run that the Indians scored in the second. See, that's Danks right there. 89, fastball away, strike one, tried to go with that slider down and in. He missed, but that's him. He has to move that fastball around. Well, eventually try to get you out with that changeup. There it is. Well, that's a fastball. And the one, two. Strike three call. Change up to the inside. He went away and missed. He came came back inside and hit with it. 
So you can see he can use that uh, changeup to both sides of the plate. Well, Wednesday night, this uh, White Sox are still in town. It's a four-game series. It'll be fireworks and dollar dogs. And the first 10,000 fans through the gates will receive an Indian's cap. And the fireworks are all part of the fan ticket exchange opportunity after the rain-delayed May 31st game. So log on to Indians.com and get your tickets. That'll be Wednesday night, game three of four of this series. Carlos Santana takes the ball down in the dirt, drove in. The Tribes only run with a sacrifice fly in inning number two. A one hop bouncer to Gordon Beckham and the second baseman throws out Santana. John Danks has retired eight straight, one nothing Cleveland, middle era after four. The wireless receiver only from AT&T U-verse Rethink Possible. And by your local Toyota dealers. Toyota, let's go places. We will go down to the fifth inning with the Indians on top by a score of one to nothing. Connor Gillespie, Diane Vicieto, Gordon Beckham do up for Chicago. Zach McAllister for Shutout innings. He's given up just one hit. He has struck out a pair. And a strike called to Gillespie, who fly to center his first time up. Slicing toward the line. But Ryan Rayburn runs it down one away. Our great clip of the game from yesterday, Ubaldo Jimenez. With really a terrific outing. I said at the time, I thought it was hey. maybe his best start of the season. Eight innings, two hits, shut out baseball, walk three, struck out six. Well, following suit is what he did. Retired the last nine in a row. Yeah. I mean, you don't see him go deep into the game uh, rarely. That was the seventh time he's gone six or more, and it was the second time he's gone eight innings. But it, throwing strikes, used that fastball a little bit more. It was a very good outing. Line to first, just by Swisher, down the line it goes. Stubbs over to cut it off. Vicieto's going for two. The throw, not quite in time. 
You know, you got to force him to, to make that throw. That's a good call on Viciato's part. I mean, Stubbs is going away from second base to pick that ball up. He knows he's got to plant. He's got to turn. He's got to make a strong, accurate throw. It's a nice job of hitting, going the other way. Big, strong hitter. Now, look at as Stubbs going, you got to challenge him right here. Make him make the good throw. He hesitated a little bit. He still got in there, but he could have got in there a little quicker if he didn't hesitate. You see, Stubbs has to come up and really turn and whirl and make an accurate throw. The throw was right on the money. He just couldn't get enough on it. Fastball strike to Gordon Beckham, who walked his first time up. Beckham fouled it into the glove of Santana. It's 0-2. Well, since 1918, this is now the seventh longest scoreless inning streak by an Indians pitching staff. They have gone 25 straight innings without allowing a run. They've made some people look at the, some record books recently, haven't they? Yeah, you tough. know that game Masterson pitched the one nothing when Bourne hit the home run? Never in their history had they had a, the leadoff man score or hit the home run, and that was the only run of the game. Loop foul down the right side. It's the longest streak now since 2008 when they went 31 consecutive scoreless innings as a staff. And if somehow they keep this going long enough and surpass that one, and now you're, you're back into uh, some really deep territory. Where do we stand right now, 25? Yeah, 25 innings. So you're I'll talking pie. about another shutout today. That's what you're talking about to get to 31. Yeah, 31. They did that in 2008. There's a bouncing ball towards second base. And Jason Kipnis will flip it over two down as Viciato goes to third. Get ready for Fox Sports 1, America's new 24-hour sports network. Fox Sports 1 will be your home for live sports news, highlights, and shows that only Fox can bring you. America's new sports network is Fox Sports 1 coming August the 17th. Popped in the air. Shallow center. Bourne is there. He calls for it. Makes the catch. Another goose egg for Zach McAllister and the Indians. We'll go to the bottom of the fifth. one nothing, Cleveland.
Callister and Carlos Santana talking things over. Mark Reynolds leading off the bottom of the fifth. Fouls it back. He walked his only time up. A little bit high, one and one. Boy, Danks doesn't must mess around, does he? He gets on the rubber. He's ready to go. He tries to stay in a nice, quick r rhythm. There's that changeup, low and away, two balls and a strike. Reynolds had a good at-bat in his first at-bat to draw the walk. Had that man at third base, and he spit on a couple of pitches. That's a good sign sometimes. Line drive toward right field, caught by Rios, one away. Our in-game recap brought to you by your local Toyota dealers. Zach McAllister has given up just two hits through five innings of work. A couple of strikeouts. Both of them are called thirds. He is just picking up where the others have left off during this Indians yeah. stretch of terrific starting pitching. And, of course, the only run of the game is sack fly from Carlos Santana, plating as Drupal Cabrera. I'll tell you what uh, about Zach is... That second time through the lineup, he's, he threw 30 pitches, 25 strikes, eight or nine first pitch strikes. So he went through them that second time very easily. Mike Avilas had a chance to add to the Indians' lead in that second inning. Had a runner at third with one out. But he hit one just off the end of the bat, kind of a broken back, hump back liner to short. It was caught by Alexi Ramirez. And the tribe would strand Ryan Rayburn at third base in that inning. There's a high fly ball toward left field. Viciedo will make the catch. We'll go back to the Hyundai Studios for an in-game update with Al Pulaski. Hey, Matt, Rick, a battle of the National League best tonight. St. Louis and Pittsburgh in Pittsburgh. This one so far to the Pirates. Four runs in the first inning highlighted by Pedro Alvarez's 27th homer of the year. It was a three-run shot. Four to nothing, Pittsburgh, fourth inning over the cards. Matt? All right, thanks a lot, Al. You see there the Pirates just a game and a half back of St. Louis. They got a lot of games left, too, so that's going to be a dogfight. They've been waiting a while in Pittsburgh for Pedro Alvarez to bust out, and I think he's finally done it. He leads the National League with 27 home runs. Cargo of Colorado, one behind him when the day began now. I'll tell you what, you talk about breaking out. How about Dominic Brown? He's third in the National League with 24 dingers. Well, that's true. That's why... Philadelphia would never give up on that kid. Another youngster, Paul Goldschmidt of Arizona. He's got 23. He's a man, and he can drive them in, too. And then he got Jay Bruce, followed by Dan Ugly, Troy Tolowitzki, and Carlos Beltran. Drew Stubbs, a 2-1 count. Popped him up. Beckham, the second baseman. Makes the grab. The Indians go in a hurry. And that's 11 straight set down by John Danks.
firework spectacular that will take place August 9th and 10th. The Indians will host the L.A. Angels. Fans will be treated to an expanded fireworks display and will pay a tribute to the Rolling Stones' 50th anniversary. Alejandro Deazo will lead off the sixth inning for Chicago. He's 0 for 2. Inside ball one. One ball, one strike. The Indians' longest consecutive scoreless inning streak, 47 innings without allowing a run. That was done in 1948, the year they won the World Series. If McAllister and company could somehow finish this out and post a shutout here tonight, it would equal the fourth longest streak in Indians history. And it's been done twice previously. 1968, they went 30 consecutive scoreless innings, and also in 1956. A full count to Diaz. McAllister into the line, the payoff pitch. Piazza, fly ball center field. Bourne got a late break. He comes flying in. He goes to a dive, and he makes the catch. Yeah, he did get a late break. You're right. He stayed back thinking that ball was going to be a little deeper and then had to kick it in gear. But he ends up catching the ball. Might have caught it off the end of the bat, and it, therefore it just died in yeah, front of him. It, it, it very well could have. We'll make this our McDonald's. I'm loving it. You love the catch. You get that glove out in front so you don't land on your wrist, but he makes a nice uh, diving catch coming in. Yeah, you don't want to let that leadoff man get aboard. McAllister loves it. Alexei Ramirez. One for two with one of the two White Sox hits in this game. Well, McAllister tonight has done a good job of going 0-2-1-2, making these guys put the ball in play. Ramirez beats it into the ground, two down. Here's the AT&T trivia question. Let's uh, reveal the answer. Who's the only American League first baseman to win a gold glove in the 1960s and the 1970s? Boomer? The late George Scott? I think so. George, what, passed away today, was it? 67 and 68 and 71 through 76. Rope foul. Not by much. He was traded for Cecil Cooper when he was with the uh, Milwaukee Brewers. Went to Boston back in 77. Brewers from 72 and their first year was 70 because we have talked about it. That could be trouble. That's extra bases as Stubbs tries to run it down. And Rios pulls into second base with a two-out double. Pretty good approach there by Alex Rios. He got a fastball out over the plate, and McAllister's fastball comes back. His four-seamer does. But that's a good approach. Stays inside the ball, an easy double, his 22nd, but there's two outs, so it's going to take a hit now by Adam Dunn. Adam Dunn looks at a belt high pitch for strike one. That's down the right field line. It's a fair ball. Into the corner it goes. 
Rios comes around to score to tie the game. And on back-to-back two-out doubles, the White Sox tie the game and they end the Indians' consecutive scoreless innings pitched streak. And it sounded like he hit it right off the end of the bat. It was a changeup, and he did. It just upstairs. That was right down Broadway. He's lucky he just got it off the end of the bat. Or it could have been a two-to-one ball game, but he was out in front a little bit, drilled it down into the corner. So the fourth hit, that you know, the White Sox have been pretty good as well with two outs and runners in scoring position as a team. They hit 265 this year. So they tie it up, and out of their four hits, three have been doubles. Now Paul Canerco. He lines one up the middle. Cabrera can't get it. And Dunn's going to come around third. He's going to score, and Chicago will take the lead on three consecutive two-out hits. Well, and you see what happens. These White Sox, the veteran hitters, are getting after him early. They know he's throwing a lot of strikes. He's had a lot of 0-2, 1-2 counts. And Canerco steps right up, and he's not going to spot him a strike and drill it right back up the middle after Dunn hit early in the count. But he's upstairs with everything. He hasn't been down at the knees. These guys have been able to get to it. So now the Sox come back with two outs, take the lead two to one. Now Connor Gillespie. Oh for two on the night. He has fly to center, fly to left. There's a good pitch right at the knees for a fastball. Strike one. That's hit pretty well. Left center field. Nobody's going to get it. Or did he? He did make the catch. Ryan Rayburn did get there and pull it in to end the inning. Another terrific play by Rayburn, grimacing a little bit as he comes back to the Tribe dugout. What a play by Rayburn. White Sox lead it 2-1. to one. Bottom of the sixth, the Indians need their, their bats to wake up. Yeah. They've been stymied by John Danks. He's retired 11 in a row. They have one hit, a Rayburn double, and that ball could have been uh, could have had a play on him, so he could be throwing a no-hitter. Upstairs with it, 3-0. Boy, this would be great to get Bourne aboard. 
to start the inning. He finds the zone. Three and one. For Danks, that's his first 3 0 count, so see if Bourne makes him throw three in a row. Up high, ball four. The Indians have their leadoff man aboard here in the sixth. Here's our AT&T U-verse rewind. Watch the locations. Up towards the middle. Change up. Up. Canerco's hit. Up. He's got to get the ball down. He was able to get out of it, but he did give up the two runs. So Nick Swisher coming up here. 0 for 2 on the night. Born aboard to start the home half of the sixth inning. Danks very quick to the plate. Just a little slide step and then the ball is gone. Man, Swisher working himself into a good count here, 2-0. and oh. Up high, three and zero. So he was three and zero to Bourne. Now he's three and zero to Swisher. Well, Danks has been pounding the strike zone for the most part all game long. He did walk Reynolds back in the second inning when he had somebody on base. Now that time he brought the high leg kick and he still couldn't command it. Walked Swisher on four straight. So now two on, nobody out here in the sixth inning. I was. About to say, Rick, that Danks has only uh, given up. I'm sure he hasn't given up a stolen base. They've only attempted two stolen bases against him this year, and they've been caught both yeah, times. Yeah, well, he's a guy you don't run on. But that was only his 10th, 11th, and 12th walk today. He had nine walks coming in to the ball game, So he's walked three. And especially after they come back and take the lead, he walks the first two guys of the inning. On nine pitches. That's... Sometimes there, this game is just impossible to Hard figure to, out. Yeah, you know that's true. You figure, all right, here you go, Johnny boy. We got you a couple of runs. Go on out there and deal. And he, he gives the Indians two runners. Well, right. they've got a chance now. Jason Kipnis has struck out twice, though. He squares, pops it straight up in the air, but it's back, and so Kipnis stays alive. Probably lets out a sigh of relief at the same time. No doubt. If you give up and out that way, trying to bunt, and I truly believe that's on his own. Trying to lay the ball. His job is to get those two runners over, and I think he best feels that that's the way he can get it done, is moving them along. Thanks. Turns, nothing doing. And he didn't give anything away, too. Yeah, for Danks in his last three starts, man, he's only walked two guys. He's walked three. He's walked two in this inning. Got to make him pay for it now. The 0-1, Kipna squares, bunts it. Oh, well done to third. Gillespie can't come up with the play, and the bases are loaded. You know, that's what happens sometimes. You'll play little ball, and you have a chance to have a big inning. That uh, is a play he'll get a hit on because he laid a beautiful bunt down. And you force Gillespie, who's had a tough night defensively anyway, already to this point, make a barehanded play and force the issue. So he tries to rush it a little bit. He doesn't come up with it cleanly. So nice job by Kipnis to play little ball to get him over. He ends up getting rewarded with a base hit. They have bases loaded and nobody out. 
And as Dribble Cabrera coming to the plate. Cabrera reached on an air and scored the Indians' only run in the second. But a chance to inflict some damage now. Bourne, Swisher, Kipnis on the bags. And Cabrera chased the ball in the dirt. Well, he's not giving it. He started him off with the changeup. And that's his go-to pitch. His bread and butter, that changeup. Playing off the aggressiveness of Cabrera here. Mm -hmm. That one's hit hard to short. Ramirez went down, flipped it to second. They turn. They get the out at first, not at second. I was waiting right. and waiting and waiting for the umpire to make a call. It took a while, but D.J. Rayburn made the correct call. The second baseman was clearly off the bag, so Kipnis is safe. The Indians tie the game, and now they've got second and third and one out. He made a great play. He just rushed the throw. It's a high breaking ball that he happens to get away with because of the play of Ramirez. And as he flips it, watch. He could not stay on the base, so he comes out to get it, and he's going to go to first anyway and hope you get the call. The umpire was right on it, made a very good call. So he gets the uh, the RBI, yep. the Indians tie it up, and it'll be a 6-4-3 uh, put out by Cabrera. So a 2-2 ball game. And now Ryan Rayburn, the batter, with a chance to put the Indians back in front. If he can get a fly ball deep enough. Well, this is Denks' fault for walking the leadoff, man. He comes around to score. Tonight, the Indians, uh, Cabrera scored. He was on with an error, and it was a sack fly that got him in. This one, a ground ball, or I should say a line drive, but a fielder's choice. One ball, one strike to count on Rayburn. A year ago, Ryan Rayburn suffered through one of the most miserable years of his career. He said the game wasn't even fun. He was released by Texas or Detroit after he hit just a buck seventy one for the Tigers. And one homer and 12 runs batted in in 66 games last year for Detroit. He was playing second base more or less on an everyday basis, and it just things went from bad to worse. The Indians offered him a chance to come to spring training and compete for a job. And he has thoroughly enjoyed his time with the Indians. Didn't like that call. It's two and two. Well, it's a changeup. Rayburn didn't like it. He thought it might have been a little down. Take a look at it and see. Well, his, he sort of gets in the way. Two two is low and a full count. And the smart pitcher, what does he do? He goes back down even lower with this changeup, but uh, Rayburn didn't bite. He said, "Uh uh-uh. The first one wasn't a strike. I'm not going after that one. Second and third, one out of the sixth. Game tied at two. Rayburn takes aim. Danks payoff pitch. Slow chopper back to the mound. He'll look Swisher back, throw to first, two away. So for the second time tonight, the Indians have had an opportunity to get a runner home from third with less than two out. And they're 0 for 2 in that category. Well... See if they can get the big two out hit now. Carlos Santana, a sack fly in the second. And he grounded to second base in the fourth. It was Santana's sack fly that gave the Indians a 1 nothing lead. And then on the throw home, the Indians were able to get Ryan Rayburn from second to third. But they didn't get him home. That second inning, and now here in the sixth. Both innings over the 20-pitch mark when they scored. And most of those pitches have been his fault. 
in this inning because he walked a couple of guys. Right at the shortstop, Ramirez throws him out, inning over. Boy, it could have been a big inning. The Indians managed just one run, and they tie the game at two. Paninis with 18 locations in Northeast Ohio and by Levin. Here's the view from our Panini cam brought to you by Panini's Bar and Grill. Two to our score, seventh inning. Bottom third of the White Sox order coming here. Diane Viciato, Gordon Beckham. And Josh Fegley. McAllister. Two runs on five hits. He's walked one, struck out two in his six innings of work. Ball one in the dirt. Nice pick by Santana. He's going to take some time to give him. He might be cussing him out because he all laid it. Let's see. He's going to move out of the way. Oh, yeah. Oh, He's oh, not going oh, to be happy with Santana on the way back. That's the reason why they go out and talk to that pitcher. That ball got him. He needs a, a little breather. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry, sir. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> Apology not accepted. Fouled back out of play. Cody Allen getting up in the Indians bullpen right now. Weekly chop towards first. Swisher's there. The flip. McAllister kicks the bag. One away. Well, the Tigers are back in town for a pivotal four-game series. That'll start uh, Monday. That's the 5th through the 8th of August. So good seats remain for all games. It's dollar dog night. Take a short little trip down south to Miami for a three-game series and then come back, and it's Detroit Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Gordon Beckham has walked and grounded out tonight. Hits one of the air. Pretty well hit. Deep center. And Bourne runs it down right in front of the wall for out number two. Ball carried a long way. Right at that odd time at twilight hour, too. You wonder sometimes if it gets a little tougher to track the ball for the outfielders. Tonight on Training Camp Daily. Jim Donovan, Andre Knott, Doug Deacon. They'll all be there for you. They'll here from Paul Kruger, Barcavius Mingo, Jordan Cameron. Complete coverage of all today's action from Berea tonight at 1130 on Training Camp Daily. 
Josh Fegley is 0 for 2. He has flied to right, flied to center. He was uh, called back up from AAA Charlotte on July the 5th. But just one hit in his last 18 at-bats. Down low, two balls and a strike. Connected for his first Major League home run, though, on July the 7th off David Price of the Tampa Bay Rays. Here's a high pop to right field. In comes Stubbs. Out goes Kipnis, and Jason's there to grab it. On eight pitches, the White Sox go one, two, three. Time now for the seventh inning stretch. It's brought to you by Spitzer Auto World. Life is hard. Buying a car shouldn't be. our score, bottom of the seventh inning. And for the Tribe, Mark Reynolds, Mike Avilas, and Drew Stubbs. Now the 0-1 pitch. Spun him out of the way. And Reynolds, a good cut. He was on it, but fouls it back. A ball and two strikes. We're in the seventh inning with the Tribe and the White Sox tied up at two. And now the count evens. Two balls, two strikes. Out right back. Detroit is off tonight. The Tigers will open up a series at home starting tomorrow night against the Washington Nationals. They'll get Steven Strasburg. Against uh, Anibal Sanchez tomorrow night. 2-2. Way outside with the breaking ball. And a full count. Matt Lindstrom getting loose in the Chicago pen. Danks right at 100 pitches on the night. 55% for strikes. The payoff. 
Outside, ball four. He's walked the leadoff man for the second inning in a row. Second time that Reynolds has drawn a walk tonight. I like that. The Way, Way Back. This summer's movie with something for everyone now playing. You might think, The Way, Way Back, it's a movie starring Tom Hamilton. But no. What is it? It's starring Steve Carell and Tony Collette, Sam Rockwell. Today's Cleveland Clinic call to the bullpen. We'll see Matt Lindstrom. John Danks went six innings plus the leadoff batter here in the seventh. He'll give way to the Chicago right-hander when we come back. The Indians and the White Sox knotted up, but the Tribe has their leadoff man on here in the seventh, and Matt Lindstrom coming on for the 51st time already this year. Yeah, that's first in appearances. Recent opponents, he has uh, 12 ground ball double plays that he has induced. He's second in appearances. Danks went out there, and I'll tell you what, he pitched a good game. The walk, the error in the second inning is how the Indians, they, that was an unearned run. Then he walked the first two guys in the sixth. The bun hit by Kip. This ball never left the infield, and they score another run to tie it. Yeah, that, it's a strange game here tonight. Mike Avilas, 0 for 2. Do you think Mark's going to take off? <laughs> Either that or he's still trying to get loose. It's not Harold Reynolds on first. <laughs> Hell yeah. Tyson, that for you. <laughs> like that. Now, Vila squares and a pretty good bunt up the first base side. That's well done. He'll move the runner into scoring position. One away now for Drew Stubbs. You know, these guys now are getting it. When you play one-run games, their their job is to get them over and trust your teammates to get them in. It looks like Brantley's going to come up and have a pinch hit appearance here for Stubbs. That way he can put Brantley in left and move Rayburn over to right. So Michael Brantley coming off the, the bench for a pinch hitter, and here comes Robin Ventura, and they've got a lefty, I'm sure, in their bullpen. So the manager's starting to manage. And he does make the move. So a timeout here at Progressive Field. Today's Cleveland Clinic call to the bullpen.
of the seventh inning. Runner at second base, one out. Pinch hitter Michael Brantley announced. Left-hander Donnie Veal coming on now for the Chicago White Sox. A 692 ERA. He has not pitched well this year. And it's kind of a curious move for Robin Ventura to bring him into this situation. Yeah, Michael Brantley has struggled against left-handed pitching this year, but Donnie Veal has struggled more against left-handed hitters. Yeah, that's, uh, you know what, I guess if you're going to come in and you're going to have to use him, he's going to have to get left-handers out. But Brantley, 260 hitter against lefties, I, he hangs in there and, and puts up a, a quality at bat, I always feel. So I don't, we'll see what happens in this situation. One out, they're going to have uh, two lefties, opportunities to get him in. As a pinch hitter, Michael is one for one. Fastball strike. You know, the other left-hander they had in there, uh, Matt Thornton, late in the ball game, he's gone. They can't use him anymore, so if this guy's going to be part of their future, he's going to have to learn how to get left-handers out, whether he's doing it this year or not. Down low with the breaking ball. They do have David Percy as well coming out of the bullpen as a left-hander. Cody Allen, he's been throwing for a while. He comes in if the game's tied. If the Indians take the lead, it looks like Joe Smith. Off speed and a slow breaking ball dips in. One and two the count. Well, he got a look at it. Brantley... No stranger. He's not afraid to hit with two strikes. We say that all year long. Now well, he got a look at his breaking ball away and one that started at him. So we'll see how he tries to finish him off here. In the dirt, good block by Fegley. Mark Reynolds, the go-ahead run in scoring position. Alexi Ramirez, the shortstop, trying to keep him close. Brantley chased one in the dirt and strikes out two down. Back to the Hyundai Studios for an in-game update with Al Pulaski. Hey, man, battle of the American League East heavyweights tonight in Boston. Red Sox and Rays. David Price cruising along on a one-hitter here in the sixth until Brandon Snyder hits one off the right field foul pole. That cuts the lead in half. It's still 2-1 to one Rays. They're in the bottom of the eighth at Fenway. Matt? Very tightly contested race in that AL East. They're in a rain delay now in Boston. Shocker. Yeah, I was going to say. Well, that, that game tonight is a makeup game from them earlier in the year, I think, because of rain. Just last Thursday. So they're making it up, and they get 2-1 to one late in the game, and it's raining again. Rained all three days when we were there. Yeah, because Seattle will, will open a series tomorrow at Fenway, and Tampa Bay will be going home to take on the Arizona Diamondbacks. One zero pitch. It gets away from Fegley. Down to third. Goes Reynolds. That's all with two in a row. That one gets away, so now they need one more. You know, the ball was in the dirt, but it didn't look like Fegley got his glove all the way down quick enough to block it. He might have just... Misread the pitch a little bit. 2-0 delivery. Bourne fouls it back. Michael B. has been an RBI machine here of late. Six-game hitting streak. Yeah, 323 with runners in scoring position. Not too shabby.
That slow breaking ball has been pretty effective for Donnie Veal here tonight. Evens the count of two and two. Bounced it in front of the plate. Fegley kept that one from getting by him. Otherwise, the Indians would have taken a lead right there. Now the string is out. A full count for Bourne. Nick Swisher would be next. If Bourne gets on board to keep the inning alive. The payoff pitch. Foul back. He got another break of ball that was up. It was in. He was able to get a piece of it. And stays alive. Just missed low, and Donnie Veal can't believe it. He threw his arms up in the air. He thought he had strike three. And I tell you what, it was very close. I can understand why he thought he had strike three. Take another look for yourself. It's close. I mean, it looks low, but we've seen that pitch call to strike. Well, it's really close to take. Don Cooper, the pitching coach, out to talk with well, Veal. Trying to pump him up a little, a little bit. You know, if your pitcher thinks he had a strike, hey, look, take his mind off it, give him a little scouting report what he has to do. But it's first and third, so the Indians still trying to take the lead here in the bottom half of the seventh. Maybe they would just want to make a little comment to this umpire before he leaves, too. That's their way of doing it. See if he does. There he goes right now saying something. Ah, oh, that was awfully close. Looked good. Yeah, see, they're drawing all the way back. It's the way of getting your, your point across. And, you know, yeah. without getting thrown out and maybe get a call from this guy. Who knows? Well, Don Cooper's been around a long time. He knows how to work. Sure you do. You always, they all know. Look at that. <laughs> you want your pitcher to get that call, but, yeah, you have your ways of getting your point across. Meantime, the Indians want to get a run across. Nick Swisher walked his last time up 0 for 2 on the night. Swisher, uh, Swisher had back-to-back -back clutch hits in Chicago to help the Indians sweep that four-game series from the White Sox back in June. One night, Swisher had a game-winning homer. The next night, he had a game-winning base hit right up the middle. Down the dirt, gets away from Fegley, but he blocked oh, it enough I'm, to keep it in front of him and holding it third I'm is Mark Reynolds. Bourne didn't go to second base there. That's his job because they can't do anything with the guy at third. They've got to look him back. Michael should be on second base here. He's got the play in front of him. Once he sees that ball go in the dirt, you can go. Because he's not going to throw to second base. He's going to look that guy back at third. You see him look over at Bourne. There's the play. But he felt he couldn't make it, obviously. Chopped to third. Scooped nicely by Gillespie. And he throws him out to end the inning. Seven complete. We're tied at two.
to retransmit it in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Cleveland Indians. Two to our scores. We go to the eighth inning. No decision tonight for Zach McAllister. He went seven innings. Two runs on five hits. And the new Indians pitcher, Cody Allen, 45th appearance of the year, 4-1, and one, and a 2.51 ERA. Michael Brantley takes over in left field, and Ryan Rayburn goes from left over to right. Top of the order for Chicago, Alejandro Diaz. He showed bunt, pulled it back, the fastball up high. Fastball a little bit high. Fastball strike two and one. Little bit too high once again, and it's three and one. Call to strike, full count. So Diaz are very patiently. Looking over Cody Allen in this at bat. And it's fouled back out of play. Count stays three and two. Has it? 0 for 3 on the night. And the payoff pitch is swung on and missed. Cody Allen ran the high heater past him upstairs. One gone here in the eighth. As promised earlier, it's Miller time brought to you by Miller Light. Ryan Rayburn defensively yesterday made a terrific play. That really was a nice play. This one was a beautiful running catch. He didn't know if he was going to catch up to it. He hurt his uh, elbow again, I guarantee it. Same thing, running into the wall. You find it one time, and you figure, what's going to happen? You're going to get it again. Cody Allen misplays it. Kipnis bare hand grab and throw, but he can't get Ramirez. Well, I think Allen might have put the glove in front of his face and lost it for a minute because it's his ball. He can't believe. Look at He's looking at the glove now. I don't know if he blocked him himself out. Watch his glove up in front of his face. It's a routine play. You see, he did. I guarantee he didn't see the ball because his glove was right in front of his face. And he thought it was going in, but he wasn't sure where it was at, and it got by him. Watch. Where's the face? You don't see it. And he lost it. He sure did. He'll be Second charged error. with an error. And a fastball strike.
Hunter goes, and Rios takes. Pitch up high. Throw down. They got him. They what got a him. throw. They call him safe. On the, look oh, at, my. Santana threw his mask up in the air at home plate. Jason Kipnis arguing with D.J. Rayburn. The, the players are all over Rayburn, and now, now the, it looks like John Hirschbeck's coming in trying to yeah, keep peace. He's getting the players out of the way. Now, the first call that was made, it was a bang-bang play, and it went the White Sox way. As a matter of fact, it was Ramirez. He comes in this time. That was a beautiful throw by Santana, and Santana can't believe he was called out, nor can Kipnis, so that, that tells me that they had him. When you see the player's reaction, you know, and that, that one right there, watch the throw, outstanding, right on the money. It beats him. Oh, there's no question he's oh, out. He's That's out. not even close. No, he gets his hand. That's a bad call. That's a brutal oh, call. My. There's the tag. He got him by a foot. That's, and look at it. He's going to call him How safe. do you miss that call? I understand the bang-bang play, but when the glove comes down and hammers the hand before it clearly gets to the bag? Someone's got to ask him because he blew the call. In the air to center field. Born on the run. And he gives way to Rayburn who makes the catch. Two down as Ramirez tags and goes to third. Well, the crowd voicing their opinion, which is good. I mean, they, they feel they should be out of the inning. But they're not. They have one tough out to get. and You've got a man 90 feet away. That's the go-ahead run here. And out comes Francona. Looks like he's going to match up with his left-hander, Hill, against Dunn. Well, the inning should be over, but D.J. Rayburn filling in for Jim Reynolds on this crew. Clearly with a missed call, keeps the inning alive, and one more shot for Chicago when we come back as Adam Dunn will be facing Rich Hill. Let's go back and revisit why the inning is still going for Chicago. It was a good pitch for Santana to throw on. It was a fastball right there. Watch the tag come down. There it is. It gets him before his hand is at the base. And the umpire waited a long time. He didn't make the call, and he's obviously saying that Kipnis didn't make the tag. You know, he's saying the hand got in there, but Kipnis is saying, no, I didn't. I tagged that hand, the wrist, and the umpire saying no. So he didn't see the tag. Wow. I, how? That's, how? I, I have no idea. No, I, I know. We, we zoomed in. That's about as close as you can get. And you know what? Kipnis, you don't see him react like that too often. And it was a You know who's really upset is Santana, who made the good throw. He's been having a tough time throwing him out. And now you see Cabrera talking to the umpire. Hey, it's over with. Get this guy out, and you got to come in and score. Well, 
Adam Dunn, an RBI double his last time up, also came around to score a run. Rich Hill goes with a fastball first pitch, misses inside. Dunn this year is batting a buck 86 against left-handed pitching. And Rich Hill's behind him 2-0. and Hill's on for one batter. This is it. You got Paul Canerco on deck. And right-hander Brian Shaw up in the tribe pin. The 2-0. Roped foul. Almost picked off the first base coach. <laughs> Daryl Boston, you better keep moving back, pal. You better play where Kipnis is. You better keep going down there. We don't move as fast as we once did. <laughs> the 2-1. Chop foul again. Swisher was telling Daryl Boston, back up, back up near closer to me. <laughs> That's what some of the coaches, they make them wear helmets now, and they have for the last year. You're going to start seeing coaches with gloves in them tucked in the back side of their pants, so when guys come up, they may just bring one out. <laughs> two balls, two strikes, two outs here in the eighth. Game tied 2-2. Ramirez off in foul ground at third. The 2-2 pitch. Low and a full count. Hill ready. The payoff pitch. Strike three call. That'll end the inning. Rich Hill gets his man as the White Sox strand a runner at third. And we stay tied at two. Two to our score, bottom of the eighth inning. Jason Kipnis will lead it off. Left-hander Donnie Veal. Down low, ball one. Down low.
Caught the outside corner with it, and it's a perfect pitch, two and one. Right back up the middle, and that's through. Jason Kipnis aboard to start the bottom of the eighth for the Indians. And it's the third inning in a row the Tribe's had its leadoff man aboard. It's only the third hit for the Tribe tonight. First legitimate one. He's got two of them. He had a bun, an infield bunt single. Well, you'll take a look at it right here on the Hyundai in-game box score. Kipnis with a pair. Rayburn has the other. It was... As Dribble Cabrera, who reached on an error in the second inning and came around to score the Tribe's first run on a sack fly by Santana. Now we've got another move to the bullpen. As Robin Ventura goes for a right-hander when we come back. And the Indians have the go-ahead run aboard to start the inning as Dribble Cabrera will be coming up. He'll be facing Ramon Troncoso. Troncoso is a right-hander. 19 appearances, 1-2, and two, a 540 ERA. Right-handed hitters are batting just 167 against him. But as Dribble Cabrera, a switch hitter, will bat from the left side, left-handed hitters are batting 387 against Troncoso. He's a guy that's very closed and tries to hide the ball. He spent uh, four years with the Dodgers organization from 2008-2011. Part of the idea, I suppose, opposing managers looking at is Dribble Cabrera, because we've seen a couple of guys do this, where they switch him, they'll go to the bullpen and make him hit left-handed, his average isn't as good from this side of the plate, but seven of his eight home runs have come from this side of the dish. I want to see how this guy holds runners. Oh, pretty quick. He never, I figured being that closed, if he lifted his leg up, but he doesn't lift it very high. Jason Kipnis with 21 steals on the year. He's been caught six times. Swung on and missed. Good fastball, threw it right by him. And it's 0 2. Two to our score, bottom of the eighth inning. The 0 2 delivery is up and away. Let's go. 
As Dribble looks down at third base coach Brad Mills before he digs back in. Kipnis drawing a throw. But didn't have that big of a lead. Brown ball towards first. Dunn look to second and throws it back to first. Troncoso drops it. He holds well, on and tags the bag, but Cabrera is arguing at home plate that the ball came off of his foot and should have been a foul ball. Well, he, yeah. But Bob Davidson doesn't he quit make running. any indication down at first. He quit running is what happened. And, I, I mean, I couldn't tell. I didn't think so originally. But he stopped running for whatever reason, and then you saw we're done. Picked it up, wanted to go to second and just go to first. He may ask me to get help, but it's uh, I, I didn't look at it originally. No, that never got him. Unless he's trying to act it out. It didn't look like it on that shot, I'll tell you that. But he says, you know, he acts like it did. Well, the guy gets into scoring position. Kipnis is down there. It'll go as a three to one put out. Ryan Rayburn, the batter, one for three on the night. And it's inside for ball one. Two two ball game here in the bottom of the eighth. Go ahead, run. At second base. He showed bunt, pulled it back. And it's 2-0. and oh. That's encouraging. Just gave you the numbers a moment ago. Roncoso's been very tough on right-handed hitters. Buck 67 average collectively, but... Rayburn took him deep and is only at bat against him. Chop foul, third base side. Chris might Perez have, is getting loose in the bullpen just in case. Might have helped him out there. That ball, either that or that ball got inside on him. On a 2 0 count, Raven's a good fastball hitter. And that ball ate him up inside a little bit. There's Perez getting loose. When the Indians uh, won that doubleheader against Chicago, game one, 19 to 10, that was a game when Rayburn went deep off Truncoso. Well, everybody hit the ball in that series. A 2-1 pitch. Slowly bounced towards third. It's a fair ball. Gillespie throws him out. Two away. Indians Live comes your way immediately following the game here on Sports Time Ohio. The highlights. Analysis. And interviews from the clubhouse. All part of it. Brought to you by Conrad's Tire Express and Total Car Care. Carlos Santana 0 for 2, a sack fly back in the second inning. Santana switch hitter, then you got right-handed hitters to follow, though Jason Giambi has moved to the on-deck circle. He would be batting for Mark Reynolds should the inning continue. And Santana takes a strike. The Indians have 13 players on their roster with 20 or more runs batted in. That's the most in all of baseball. And as I mentioned before, eight of the nine starters tonight have 
31 or more runs batted in. The only one that doesn't, Mike Avilas, has 29. Swung on and missed. 0 oh, and 2 the count. And Troncoso ready with the 0 2. Up high with it. Kipnis at second base with the go ahead run. Up and away, two and two. Again, Santana trying to fight his way back into the count like he does so many times when he's down 0 2, 1 2. Always seems like he gets it back to that full count. Foul back. Now, the ability to foul off good pitches. Always helps those guys that seem to always get themselves back into counts. Yeah, I mean, those are good hitters. To me, high average hitters a lot of times, they fall off a pitcher's pitch until sometimes he makes a mistake. Not that they're always going to get hits, but they really make them work to get you out. And more times than not, when you can do that on a consistent basis, it's not an easy thing to do. Pitchers have a tendency to make mistakes with you more often. You know, Santana, he tried to throw that curveball. He started him. He threw him a good curveball to get ahead strike one, then tried to get him right there with one and left it upstairs. Now, well, Fegley had his say. Let's see what Troncoso comes with here on the 2 2. Popped him up. Ramirez, the shortstop. Makes the catch. And we'll go to the ninth. Still tied at two. Two to our score as we go to the ninth inning. On what has turned out to be a perfect evening in downtown Cleveland, a little on the fall like side. Indians live coming up after the ball game, brought to you by Conrad's. Neither team able to break through offensively. Indians had a one to nothing lead before Chicago scored a pair in the sixth to take the lead on three straight two out hits. And then the Indians came right back bottom half of the inning and eked out a run, even though they had bases loaded and nobody out. And that's where we stand, 2-2, as Chris Perez, who's been on quite a roll. 
Well, come on now. Terry Francona said the other day, this is well as he's seen Perez pitch. Well, let's hope he locks in and continues. When he's throwing that good fastball down in the zone, he has the slider. He can be unhittable. He's got Paul Konerko to start the ninth. RBI single his last time up. Konerko taking a strike. You know, he's been pounding the strike zone, too, in his last uh, three outings. When he's got that slider, he's tough. He's thrown 24 pitches, 18 were strikes, and he comes out of the chute two for two tonight. There's a drive toward right center field, but a good jump on the ball by Ryan Rayburn to haul it in for out number one. Revisiting our keys to the game brought to you by Akron Children's Hospital. Well, the Indians did score first, but it was just the one run early before they came back to tie it. 16 straight games. Uh, a new franchise mark going back to 19, what, 1916 or 1918. No one will ever confuse Chris Perez for George Hendrick. But like Silent George, he's become Silent Chris. Oh, I was gonna, that's that would be hard to do. He's no longer speaking to the media. Did they cut out his voice box? <laughs> but as long as he keeps pitching like this, no one will care. I think for the writers, you know, it's disappointing for them because Chris was always engaging, entertaining, and colorful. You never knew what he might say at any given point. Well, they couldn't wait. This may be better for Chris. Broken bat liner snared by his Drupal Cabrera two away. Going to his right. That ball sounded like it busted the bat. So yeah. it was sort of like a line drive. But Cabrera gets there, puts it away for out number two. Diane Viciato will be the batter. He is one for three. Viciato with a double earlier in the ballgame. Line to right, and that ball's blistered, oh, no. and it's going to get by Rayburn. It's going to go to the wall, and he's got trouble getting after it. Bourne flying over onto the warning trap. He's got it. He fires it in, and Viciato will have to stop at third. I had visions of a potential inside the park home run there when that ball skipped past Rayburn, but Bourne really flying over from center field to help his corner outfielder out. That right there is just a bad judgment. You give the base hit. Uh, in between because it was hit so hard. I mean, it was hit right on a line drive. So a tough one to break and get a good jump. And you know, if you don't keep it in front of you, which is a very tough thing to do, that's where you give the base hit and make them uh, get a couple more hits to, to try and score. He knows right now he made a mistake. And hopefully Chris Perez can pick him up. I'm sure it's going to go as a triple. Pitch down on the way to Beckham. Gordon Beckham, 0 for 2 on the night. There's a line drive deep left field. Back in, Brantley makes the catch. It was over his head, and he reached up through the glove and stabbed it 
to save the day for the Tribe. Nice play by Brantley. We stay tied at two. Two two our score thanks to a terrific catch in left field. Rick, sometimes you, you you don't see a ball go into your glove, do you? No, this ball was over in the middle of his head, and I'm gonna tell you something. That was he had to reach behind him. And I'll tell you, it's a strange play. He had a beat on the ball, but he didn't see it. I guarantee it. That ball was up there, and that was a fine running catch to get out of the inning. Not as easy as it looked. That's one right there where you just say, thank you. All right, so here we go now, bottom of the ninth inning. And Ramon Troncoso, who worked the eighth, will stay on to pitch tonight. Jason Giambi's going to lead it off for the Tribe. He'll pinch hit for Mark Reynolds. Giambi's had... Six pinch hit appearances, one for six on the year. In fact, he's uh, he's one behind Mike Avilas for the team lead in pinch hit at bats. And he'll try to get it rolling here in the bottom of the ninth for the Indians. Out of play. Jason O for his last 13 at the plate. Missed inside with it. Giambi 435. Career home runs. His last. Came on June the 7th in Detroit off Jose Valverde. The 1-1. Giambi with a drive. Deep center field. Diaz back. He's out of room. We're out of here. Giambi wins it with a home run on the bottom of the ninth. And I'll tell you what, watch this celebration. You talk about a guy who absolutely is beloved in that clubhouse, and they're going to give him the beating of his life now. <laughs> the man they call Big G delivers in a big way in the bottom of the ninth, and the Indians go home a winner tonight, 3-2. to two. His first home run since June the 7th, the 436th of his storied career. And a big hug for his skipper, Tito Francona, as the Indians beat the White Sox, and they've now won 8 of 10 against their Central Division rivals this year. Boy, what a way to end it. 
Ninth straight game, the Indians have hit a home run. And this one is in ultimate fashion as it gives the Tribe a series opening win over Chicago. They've now won five in a row. They go to 57 and 48. They're just two and a half games back of Detroit. They've won eight straight here at home now. Now the White Sox, they've lost four in a row, 21 of their last 29 as Chicago falls to 40 and 63 on the year. Time now for our key play of the game brought to you by Key Bank. Well, I can't wait. Hurry up. I want to see the replay of this swing right here. He's coming up and he got a breaking ball out over the plate, straight away center field. And I'll tell you, put a great swing on it. He knew it was gone as soon as it left the bat. And the streak continues, man. They're going on. It's a one-run win. Bottom half of the ninth. A walk-off, number eight on the year. Great job by Jason Giambi. And that is our key play of the game brought to you by Key Bank. Uh, get a free Kindle Fire HD when you sign up for a new checking account. Some restrictions apply. The executive producer for Sports Time Ohio is Tom Farmer, coordinating producer Steve Warren. And a happy birthday to Steve-O tonight. Tonight's game produced by Jim Murphy, directed by Pat Murray. Indians Live produced by Mike Bachman. Our associate producers, Mike Pachta and Steve Bardo. Technical director, Dan Larson. Creative consultant, Mark Koha. Indians Live, brought to you by Conrad's, is straight ahead as the Indians win it on a Jason Giambi walk-off homer, 3-2.